Welcome aboard. The feminist Benjamin Akakbo joins us to get into a conversation on the Affirmative Action Bill, which was passed yesterday in Parliament after decades of delays and obstacles. And this bill was initiated in the mid-2000s, Benjamin. Yes. And in as much as we are receiving this as great news, we haven't yet crossed the finish line yet. There's still a lot more to be done. Mm. But this morning, let's get into the conversation with two former uh, ministers of gender and social protection. We have joining us... Otiko Fisa Jaba, former Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection, as well as Nana Oye Bampuadu, also a former Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining this conversation this morning. Thank you and good morning to you all. Good, good morning. Is that Madam um, Otiko Fisa Jaba? I believe that is. Both of us. Okay, great. So, yes, today is a glorious day. I'm sure we are all celebrating. Both of you in that office fought for this bill, and we are here now this morning. How did you first receive the news? Let me start with you, Madam um, Otiku Afisa Jaba. Please unmute for me. The question is, how did you first receive the news yesterday when you heard that Parliament had passed the bill, finally? Um, are you are you unmuted? Um, we still cannot hear you. We just heard you a bit uh, a moment ago. So let me let me try and go to Madame Oye Bampo. Maybe we'll try and come back to you later. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Great. I hope you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Fantastic. Yes. So I was asking, how did the news come to you yesterday? Well, I, uh, deja vu, it was, I mean, for one moment, I stood still and I couldn't believe it. And I just thank God because it's been 12 years, mm. you know, this whole formal process of passing and adopting an affirmative action law in Ghana started in government with uh, Pro uh, Professor Mills when he set up a working group. Uh, that was the, the gender minister then was uh, Honorable Juliana Azuma Nelson. So there was a working group of 21 set up in 2012. And so it's been 12 years. So I was really excited. Really, okay. Yesterday I was really excited. But and I'm still in cloud nine, on right. cloud nine. <laughs> right. But what were some of the challenges that you faced in pushing this agenda during your time in office as a minister for gender and social protection? Yes, there was a key legal hurdle that we had to um, 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 overcome. Number one was the fact that the need to pass an affirmative action bill or law, uh, notwithstanding the fact that it was entrenched in our constitution, became the subject matter of litigation at the Supreme Court. Um, mm -hmm. If you recall, um, an action was filed by, I think, the now CDD director, I think, I'm not too sure, on um, the white paper that had been issued by Professor Mills mm. on, after the constitutional review process. And so um, that Supreme Court um, um, action halted implementation of the constitutional review recommendations. And so it affected the affirmative action bill that was being processed, that was going through cabinet and also going through parliament. So we had to make a strong legal case that notwithstanding that Supreme Court um, case, in the 1992 Constitution of Ghana, there was a clear provision that Parliament was under a legal obligation to pass an affirmative action bill. And we right. were relying on that. So we were able to surmount that. So that was the key challenge that we had. And that was why it was delayed and um, it couldn't be passed in 2016. All right, please hold for me. Let me try again if I can connect with um, Otiko Afisa Jaba. Madam, can you hear me? Okay, I think we, we are having a bit of challenge with, with that. But let me come back to you, Nanaoye. So now that the bill has been passed um, by Parliament, what does this mean for us against the fight or in the fight for women representation in parliament and decision making as well as you know gender equality fight what does this mean for us it is groundbreaking when you read the bill i know it will be updated because some amendments were proposed 
but its key objective is to ensure gender equality. Mm. Um, it, it has uh, created a gender equality committee that will see through implementation. It has clearly uh, settled or cleared, uh, given roles to the different sectors. So the public service, it is very clear what their obligation is. Um, the security services, the judiciary, even private sector is included, and the trade unions. So we have clear roles and functions. And then in Schedule 1 of the bill, we have the quota, um, the, the quota system. So we know that in two years' time, from now to 2026, the minimum representation of women will be 30%. Mm. Then for the next two years, up to 2028, it will be 35% minimum representation. Then by 2030 in Ghana, 50% of all positions, all recruitment, filling of vacancies, 50% representation of women across wow. and i believe that is um that is very good and there are some incentives for private sector mm. uh the public service uh, have a, a key role to play even political parties are also included my disappointment is i don't see any clear provision on seats that are reserved for women in parliament this was also something that we were fighting for that certain seats should be reserved for women, but I don't mm. see that in the in the bill um, that I'm reading now. Right. And so I think that is my disappointment, but I'm happy the way uh, functions have been outlined, especially for the independent constitutional bodies, their roles, electoral commission has a role to play, public service has a role um, to play, and the, the percentages have been clearly outlined. And every year, each of these sectors have to submit a report to the Gender Equality Committee and the Department of Gender. And um, if you do not comply, there's even a fine that you have to pay. So I'm really happy about that. If we are mm. able to implement, I'm sure we'll go far as far as uh, gender equality is concerned and adequate representation of women across the political, social, educational, cultural, and right. other uh, sectors of the society. Okay. Now, now, now a quick inter in interjection or a quick intervention. Uh, there are those, and, and I'm playing the devil's advocate here. I know what pertains in Ethiopia and other places, but there are those who say, okay, so you say 30% uh, for those in parliament or something of the sort. What if those spaces are indeed taken by the women and then the slots that, you know, are free for all, most of them go to women as well. Some feel that could be problematic. I'm just putting that to you. Do you feel that could create any friction as far as uh, pushing this, this bill forward or this law forward is concerned? What's your take? Thank you very much. When you analyze the data, you would realize that representation of women is low. Look at um, the district assemblies, even with the recent district assembly elections, is way under 10%. You look at parliament, is also low. So what we're saying is that we will not get to that. We are just trying to achieve the minimum of 30% as prescribed by the United Nations. So I do not believe you'll get a situation where we will have the the quota slots, the affirmative action slots of women filled, and then you would also have more, um, I mean, women in the normal. We need to rise up to ensure that we have that minimum and that we see more women. And sometimes for one reason or the other, education, social, cultural, we are not able to get that representation. And that's why we, 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 we fought and strive for this law to be passed by parliament to ensure that women are adequately, equitably represented across the sectors, especially the judiciary and also, um, also uh, security services and public service. And um, over the years, our various presidents have appointed women to key positions. And we can all attest to the fact that women have really endeared themselves and worked hard. And so now Ghana, Ghanaians can see that when you put a woman in a position of trust, she will deliver. And I'm right. happy Parliament has finally unanimously passed mm. this bill.
Okay, please hold for me. Let me try Otiko one more time, see if um, we can connect with her. Can you hear me now, Madam Otiko Jabba? Kindly unmute if you can hear me. Okay. I it, think it appears we're we still, still having, having challenges. That challenge, yeah. But uh, no, no, yeah. It, uh, oh. Just a sec, I don't know. Uh, Otiko, was that, was that Otiko Afisa Jabba? Okay, I heard someone. I thought, I thought. It's, right. it's, it's really sad that we can't we, connect we, with we her. Can't connect we'll keep trying her. if we're able yeah. to. But yeah. something you said about not just representation, I know, yeah. And really, it's not just about representation. I was speaking to the information minister a couple of days ago, and she said that elections are not cheap. So it's not just about, you know, allocating seats to women in parliament. It's about equipping them so they can actually afford to run these elections and win seats in parliament. How does that sit with you? Yeah, when you read the bill, there are clear stipulations mm. on that. And, and, and Electoral Commission is given that role. And there are clear stipulations um, even for political parties. So political parties have also been given a role. And the law is even prescribing that political parties include this in their manifestos mm. and in their political party constitution. And that in the manifestos and in the uh, constitution, uh, there should be a progressive and there should be appointments of women to serve in key leadership uh, positions. And political parties are also asked to submit annual reports, annual gender equality reports. And this will be published in our gazette, in our um, government gazette. So you can see that, like I said, there are clear roles. And if we're able to do all this, we will actually receive, I mean, we will actually see more women in positions of their power and right. uh, in positions of responsibility across. And, and for me, that is the beauty of okay. this. For trade unions and the public sector, there are tax incentives that are granted to employers who comply with the act. And I think this will act as a carrot um, for, for um, employers to employ more women, irrespective of the fact that they get pregnant and have to go on maternity leave. That sometimes acts as a barrier for employment of women, especially in the private sector. Okay, I'm still gonna ask you to hold. Let me try um, Otiko one last time. Can you hear me, Otiko? <laughs> yes, I can hear you. Fantastic, it's great to connect with you. So first, <laughs> <laughs> apologies for the those, devil uh, is a liar. <laughs> indeed, we are going to have this conversation. Tell me how you received the news yesterday, and then we'll talk about the nitty gritty of the bill mm. and how confident you are. But first, how did you feel yesterday getting news that Parliament had passed this bill finally. This is a game changer. I felt elated. Mm. It was like a, a birthday. <laughs> Something that, you know, when you are pregnant and you are waiting for a, be a baby. Yeah. You've been waiting forever. And finally, it has been passed. And I just want to thank God and all the people. Hello, Madam Oye. Hi, Etiko. How are you it. doing? Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Congrats. Oh. Congrats. Uh, there's a song I want them to play for us. Eh? Hey, yes. the fair, the fair. Hey, okay. Uh, whatever it is that God has <laughs> right. uh, for us. Uh, okay. It has indeed come in. So when we finish, please play uh, the fair, the fair for us. Eh? We will. We Abba, will. But we are so happy. And uh, you know, it is about Ghana. It's not mm. only about women. Anything that is good for women is good for the nation, because right. the development of a woman is directly linked to the development of the nation. So this is a big precedent. It's historic. We are living it. Others are writing about it. And others will come in there, read about us. It's fantastic. Thank you so much to Parliament and everybody who has had a hand in bringing this day and making it possible. OK, I don't mean to cut your joy short, but how confident are you that now that we've reached some, I can describe it as the 11th hour process of the bill, that the mm. president will assent and turn this into a law as quickly as possible. This isn't the first bill that Parliament has passed that's stalling at that level. How confident are you? I am more than confident. He is a gender activist. Okay. He was an ambassador for gender. And look, women are close to 52% of our population. Mm. No affirmative action assent, no vote from the women. <laughs> We are going to put the screws on. Okay. This thing must become a reality. 
we are not going to dilly dally about it. Mm. It has been at a snail's pace, and if it has happened under his watch, he has no other reason but to just uh, give the assent. He doesn't have a choice. It is something he himself has five daughters. It is important for him to be recognized that since the history of Ghana, we've been trying to bring this uh, law into being. Mm. And finally, under his governance, it is coming to be. Why wouldn't he? He has no other reason but to just put the assent now, 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 now. Not yesterday, but now. Well, it did take us a while to get here. So I want to hear for you to also share your experience. What are the challenges that, you know, inhibited the speedy you know, processes of arriving at this point now? What are some of the challenges that you faced in your time in office as the Minister for Gender? Yes. Thank you very much. We set up a technical committee and we worked hard on it and took it to um, cabinet because we had come in as a new government and you have to really look at it from where the NDC and the Madame Oye had uh, started. They also took it to cabinet, but they were not able to pass it before they left office. So we came and then we had to review it and include other things that we felt were necessary, like a quota system. And uh, we found out that after several workshops with members of parliament and others that they felt that things like the quota system should be taken out. And I've seen that it has indeed been taken out. They, want, they wanted to water it down. And that was a big challenge for us. And the, the speaker then, uh, Honorable Michael Quay Senior, he was very adamant about the fact that, look, there is no point in being a dog that barks without being able to bite. Right. And so when you water it down, that is not respectful to women. We have been fighting for men all our lives. We have been the pillar of the development of this nation. But when it comes to issues of women, they always want to push it to the back and then may water it down. And so that was my biggest challenge, right. the fact that they watered it down. And I'm still unhappy that it has been watered down. Issues of women are national uh, issues. That must be looked at in the entirety of the development of our nation. If you're going to build a nation that holds women back, that talks about progressive uh, increment and having parity in the next six years. How about all the women who have died and who have not benefited from this act? It is okay. important that we realize that other countries have done it and they have been able to increase the representation of women at all levels because of the affirmative action and giving it a bite. So they okay. should not frustrate us with this issue of a progressive increment. In all the right. next six years, all the things that they have said in this current act, are they sure that they will be able to uh, implement them to ensure that we are at parity in parliament? We are just at, um, what, 40 women in parliament. At the district assembly election, we are less than 6%. Mm. The next election is in four years. And then after that, four we'll months? the 2030. Mm. Sorry? Well, the next, I mean, after 2024 right. election, okay, great. we'll be going for elections again in 2028. So many women lost their seats in parliament. Even when we have the general election, it's likely that others will also lose their seats. So when you don't put in things like the uh, quotas, then you are saying that for the four years from 2024 to 2028, we are going to have fewer women in parliament, and I'm sure it will be the same at the district assembly. And then from 2028, you just have two years to 2030. It does not make sense. It is not possible to accomplish parliament uh, parity when you have only uh, 40 women who right. are even registered. This is absurd and it's unacceptable in Ghana today when we have all these democratic uh, credentials being the black star, the first this and that. And yet, when it comes to women's issues, we are not able to put our mouths to where they are, or the money where the mouth is, and ensure that action is taken immediately, not okay. uh, progressively. But so now, th th this has come to solve all that. Let's talk about the impact this has, not just on, on, in politics and decision-making institutions, but on little girls and young women who are now coming up.
And this is also coming, I mean, I'm particularly excited because it's coming at a time where a woman is possibly going to run for uh, the office of president in America <laughs> and else, you know, and that's big, yeah. you know. So how does this impact the lives of young women? In a, in, I mean, still on the, in, on the issue of gender equality and women empowerment. How does this bill pass now impact on a larger scale the lives of younger girls watching us now? The impact will come depending on the enforcement. The Gender Equality Committee that's going to be set, the monitoring um, structures and procedures that will be put in place to ensure that after the bill is passed, the enforcement goes on. Mm. It's not enough to pass a bill when it is not enforced. Ghana has so many laws, and yet the, em empower, uh, the enforcement is so weak. It is important that we are able to see 40 to 50 percent women being elected at uh, decision-making positions and being appointed. We must see at the educational uh, establishments that there is parity. I know that when it comes to tertiary, the girls are going forward now. But at the basic, it is still not so good and the senior uh, high school level. In fact, it yesterday, yesterday at... sorry to interject, yesterday the education minister was saying that they've actually achieved gender parity in senior high schools and that as we speak, it's, 50, it's a 50-50 representation. And that's what he said yesterday in his address. There was a program on the state of education in Ghana and he put that data out. Oh, up. good. So, yeah. All right. That's a new information. Hmm. So we now have to look at the basic to ensure that we bring them up to speed. Right. In terms of employment, we must be sure that there is no discrimination. When a woman is pregnant, it should not affect her promotion. And she should not be subjected to uh, sexual harassment because she needs to be promoted. There must be equity and respect when it comes to financing, like the school feeding. The budget, you talk about gender responsive budgets. What has happened to the school feeding? They must look at it and ensure that issues concerning women must be well financed mm. so that the poverty in women will change. You cannot alleviate poverty in the nation when the women are at the lowest mm. in terms of the pyramid of poverty. It is also critical that at the political level, the political parties, you see that the chairman is a, <laughs> a man. The, the organizer is a man. Mm. It's usually only the women's organizer or treasurer or sometimes secretary. That is a woman. That is also unacceptable. All we right. need to ensure that the political parties are bringing up the women to also be chairman. If you are not part of the decision-making uh, policy, then it is difficult for your voice to be well heard. And it starts from that level, from even the household. Parents must also realize that girls can be leaders. It's not good enough to say that the girl should be cooking, she should be playing ampe, right. and the boys are going around with computers. Please, please hold for uh, me. Girls yeah. are subjected. Just a minute. And okay. girls are subjected to uh, early child marriage and then being raped and all sorts of things that reduce their dignity and reduce their advancement. The time has come for the people of Ghana, the parents, to stop subjecting girls to these uh, ridiculous old and archaic policies and traditions that hold us back. No girl can wait. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, um, your take now. First, how confident are you that now that we've reached the, this level in this process, the president will assent to this bill and make it a law as quickly as possible? And how do we ensure that the target goals we hope to achieve with this bill, which is gender equality, women empowerment, equal representation, are actually achieved? Yes, the young girl in Ghana can now dream and see her dream become a reality. For the next generation, this law is going to ensure that we have more women in decision-making positions, more women in government, more women in security, more women in the judiciary. And that is the reality of the dream of every young girl in Ghana. In terms of ensuring that this is implemented, when you assess the monitoring mechanisms in the bill, if we are able to cross every T and dot every I in terms of monitoring, as per the clauses, we will get there. And I am sure the civil society groups, the NGOs that 
have pushed this and advocated will still be there to help. And I, and my heart, my my congratulations to Sheila Minka Premo, mm. Benedicta, Benedicta, and Cynthia who worked with me to draft um, the the first um, bill. So monitoring by and uh, support and partnership by civil society as they have done during the legislative making process will also be i mean very very critical and important and we're hoping that the sectors will submit their gender equality reports and parliament will still play its role so yes it's the future is bright for women this is historic we congratulate parliament we congratulate um, government for this major historic feat and all the men and women who stood up and supported this process over 12 years, over 15 years, the Women's Manifesto and um, everybody else. Congratulations. The well, future is bright for women in Ghana. Congratulations, We're grateful then. for that. Indeed, congratulations are in order, but the work only just begins. Okay. Yes. I, I am sure yeah. Nanoe Bampo Bampo Ado and uh, uh, Otiko. Otiko Jabba, Otiko Afisa Jabba, will attest to the fact that this is just the beginning and um, more work has to be done on, on multiple facets. But I would also say that even as we have this, what is happening in most organizations, apart from you know, the public space, even private enterprise and all of that. How many female CEOs do we have? Mm. How many women are in core leadership? We've done well from the days of uh, Theodora Wood becoming Chief Justice, even to the days of her name just escapes me. Uh, she was Georgina Speaker Wood. of Parliament at a point. Georgina uh, Wood? No, 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 no. I'm talking of Speaker of Parliament. The name, I don't know why it just right. escapes me. But Joyce Bamford Addo. Joyce Bamford Addo. Right Honorable. Yes. yes, the Right Honorable Bamford Joyce Bamford Addo. We have done well. What I want to see is more of such action in the private enterprise as well. How many women are out there uh, allowed to even rise to a certain position, breaking the glass ceiling? <coughs> and in, in, in the executive, we've done it in the judiciary and the legislature. We've even done it at the Ghana Police Service. You know, there was an acting IGP as well saying, but the executive, Kamala Harris is going in the US. Are we going to break that glass ceiling? And I'm not necessarily saying that NDC because they have a female, but when do we get to that point where women are also seen to be capable? And I say that it trickles down. There was a group when I was in the University of Ghana for my undergrad, I had to literally struggle because I checked the records and realized I was an outgoing president of that group. And I realized I, it appeared there had practically never been uh, a female who had been president or it had been so long. I personally pushed for it. This person didn't even want to go. And that's one of our problems because they feel, oh, it's a man's. So when do we get to that point where we have more women right. taking up such roles? That's, that's all I'll add to the. Okay. The I'll take your final words and then we can wrap up on the conversation, starting with you, Nanoye. Yes, thank you very much also to the media for pushing this uh, for, for supporting this process. And to all of Ghana, this is a reality. Women are on the stage and we promise to deliver as we always have done since independence of this country. Let's all support implementation of the Affirmative Action Agenda Equality Act 2024. Uh, we're urging President Nana Dodankwa Kufuado to assent to this bill so that it becomes law, so that the implementation processes start. Let's all support this. Ghana wins. Ghana wins. Congratulations. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Otiko Jaba, you have the final word now. <laughs> I just want to thank God for this day. It is optimistic, and I hope that definitely every girl child would benefit from this and that we will become the game changers, the decision making makers, we must be a part of it. The president has no choice but to assent to this uh, bill. The women and the men of Ghana must work together because women's issues are national issues. Women's issues are the family issues, the societal issues. Everything that you talk about in terms of development, a woman must be a part of it. Right. We are living history, 
And we must ensure that as change agents, all of us collectively, including the media, the, the queen mothers, the traditional rulers, the society, the civil service organization, mm. civil society organizations, the government, the ministers, everybody. This is about all of us. Okay. And for Ghana to be developed, we must enforce the affirmative action bill, all the components of it, so that the woman can be just like Eve, a partner, a correct and strong and confident partner. Together, we will make Ghana greater and stronger. It's not only about America. We in Ghana, we are the black star. And yeah. we women are ready to fight for what we have to do to make this country greater and stronger for all of us to live in. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You had the Otiko Afisa Jaba, former Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection, as well as Nana Oye Bampuado, also former Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection. Mm -hmm.